Hello traders, this is Fawar Razak Zala, Market Analyst for City Index. Today is the 19th of March 2023. So following the Bank of Japan's dovish rate hike, the dollar yen has risen over 150 pips or 1% and it's nearing the highs from earlier this year at 150.88 which um, is where we'll have some stops resting above from people who were previously short the dollar yen. So we could see a run on those um, stops. And thereafter, you know, if, if, if it can sustain the breakout, uh, the next bullish target would be the uh, November 2023 high at 151.91. And I think there's uh, one additional high around that area. Yes, the October 2022 high. Um, so the area around 151.90-ish is going to be important to watch should we get there in the next couple of days. One possibility that may uh, unfold here is uh, we could see a false break above one of these highs and a quick move back down below it to create a bearish looking price pattern. So do watch out for that, especially with the Fed meeting coming up on Wednesday, which has the potential to move the dollar sharply. So a dovish Fed could send the dollar yen back down to 150 or even 149.20. That's a blue line here, which is the base of today's breakout. So uh, any move below that would be bearish, wouldn't it? Because um, then we will have created a false move higher uh, uh, today. But uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. For now, the dollar is looking quite strong, especially against the Japanese yen because of the dovish rate hike that we saw from the uh, Bank of Japan overnight. Now, the other central bank that um, decided on monetary policy was the RBA, and it was slightly less hawkish than the market had expected, causing the uh, Aussie dollar to drop. It's uh, approaching the key $65 level, which is where it took off from last time. Uh, so anywhere around the 65 to 65.25 zone, which was previously uh, also support and resistance, is where we could see the Aussie dollar potentially bounce from and already it's, it's, it's off its um, earlier lows but let's see if uh, it will be able to stage a more meaningful recovery or will it slice through this area and head sharply lower i think once we have the fomc meeting out of the way we'll have a clear answer so it's all about whether the fed will keep the previous projections of three uh, rate cuts for this year uh, if it's the latter then that would be bearish two rate cuts then we may see an immediate dollar uh, rally uh, but uh, it could then falter because the move has been priced in by the markets in the last couple of days so that's something to to consider when trading the um, dollar but um, if the fed is really hawkish and um, we see price action kind of uh, conform to the fed's view that uh, rates will go down very gradually then uh, in that case the dollar may well remain supported for a little longer than uh, I expect. But in any case, uh, we'll keep an eye on uh, key levels and we'll trade from one level to the next as we normally do. So focusing back on the FX markets and looking at a few other major currency pairs, the Kiwi also fell sharply overnight, breaking its 200-day moving average support and it's now testing the low from earlier this year at 60.38. So there is a possibility that we could see a possible double bottom formation here. Um, it's still early in the day, uh, you know, the, the Kiwi has bounced off its lows, but will it fly? Uh, that's a key question um, that uh, we will uh, probably know the answer to by uh, the next couple of days, I suppose. Um, this area is now going to be important to watch the shaded blue area where previously um, rates had rallied from before breaking down. Uh, so it's possible that uh, we could see a bounce back to this level and then a resumption lower if the Fed is uh, hawkish. Whereas uh, if the Fed is dovish or otherwise we see the US dollar weaken uh, post FOMC rate decision and we go back above the zone, uh, then I think that would create a strong bullish indication, at least from a technical point of view. Don't forget that, uh, you know, if you zoom out a little bit, you can see that uh, the Aussie, uh, the Kiwi rather, uh, is testing this key area of support um, which was previously resistance for a number of weeks before breaking out in November. So um, although it does look quite bearish, uh, given that it's, it's fallen quite sharply in the last few days, don't forget the longer term picture, which is still somewhat bullish um, to neutral, I would say. Uh, let's look at a few other currency pairs now. And um, the euro dollar is um, also testing the 200 day moving average support at 108.35. 
I wrote on this earlier, uh, so more details on, on this uh, can be found on the website at cityindex.com. But the key levels to watch, 108.35 is the 200-day moving average. Um, the last low prior to the recent rally uh, is at 107.95, so that's kind of the line in the sand for me. Uh, a daily close below that level could be uh, bearish in that it could expose a potential retest of these lows that were hit earlier this year or late last year at around 106 95 107 area um, for as long as 107 95 holds i think there's a possibility we could see um, a, a rally instead uh, because uh, recently we have seen a few higher highs and higher lows um, and the, the the ecb is still quite hawkish compared to the uh, some of the other major central banks out there and we've seen some improvement in eurozone data of late as well it's also worth keeping a very close eye on gold this week because we have a number of central bank meetings. Um, as you can see uh, on this economic calendar, we've already talked about the RBA and the um, Bank of Japan policy decision. Uh, but um, uh, on Wednesday, we have the Federal Reserve rate decision, followed on Thursday by the uh, Swiss National Bank. And then the Bank of England is meeting on Monday, uh, on Thursday as well. There, there are a few other major central banks as well uh, that uh, is not listed in this uh, economic calendar. But it is going to be a very um, central bank focused uh, week uh, for uh, FX markets. And ahead of that, and rightly so, gold is uh, consolidating its recent gains. So uh, right now it's testing this key support level at uh, 2146, which was the high made in December. Um, and uh, this level is now going to act as interim support. Will we get a break below it is the key question. And I think a lot will depend on how hawkish or otherwise the Fed is going to be on Thursday, uh, on Wednesday rather. And uh, if we do get a daily close below this shaded uh, blue area, then the next potential uh, area of support to watch is this area I've shaded, um, which um, corresponds with the highs from the previous years. Uh, that this area is, is significant, hence why I've written here key support area. Um, so um, even if you do get a, a, a pullback from these uh, still elevated levels in gold, I think the path of least resistance in terms of the longer term outlook remains to the upside. Likewise for silver, it's consolidating its recent gains because of those central bank meetings ahead. So do watch out for a potential breakout. Other key commodities to watch include crude oil, which has broken out in recent days, hasn't it? I mean, uh, you know, I've, co I've covered crude oil quite a bit uh, in, in, in the last few days, uh, but the lengthy consolidation here for several months and then the subsequent break above 80 on the WTI contract strongly suggests that we could see high 80s uh, or mid 80s uh, at the very least. And so uh, from a uh, price point of view, the next key area of resistance could be at around 85 which is a psychologically important level, but it also comes in just ahead of the 61.8, or just above it, uh, I should say, of the 61.8% Fibonacci extent, uh, retracement level. Uh, so that's uh, going to be very important to watch that area, should we get there. But um, on the downside, uh, it's, it's very clear that this area now is going to be very important to watch in terms of support at around 80 uh, even as low as 79 now. So moving forward, that's going to be the most important support zone to, to watch on any major pullbacks. Now for more analysis and trade ideas, make sure to check out the news and analysis section at cityindex.com. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.